Hey guys, Aaron Cybertron Zhang here, and today I'm back with another episode of Road to Ranked, where I climb the online series 12 ladder and provide live commentary as I go. In the previous episode, we featured a really interesting Restricted Core with Eternatus and Evil Tull, as well as a Wakamberry Gigantamax Blastoise. So, we'll be playing a couple more matches with it today. Details for the team are in the description below, and this team finished in the top 20 of the previous ranked season, so I think it's a very unconventional, you know, duo, definitely very anti-meta, but a lot of interesting components to it. So, I'm going to do a quick breakdown on Eternatus specifically, because this episode really highlights it a lot, but if you want to just skip to the battles, check out the timestamps in the description below. Thanks for watching, leave a like if you enjoy, and let's talk a little bit about Eternatus. So, one of the main reasons you may want to use Eternatus in this format is because it is incredibly, incredibly fast. In fact, this is base 130 speed, so it allows you to outspeed almost everything in the format that's common other than things like Regieleki, Calyrex Shadow Rider, and Zacian. And the thing is, Eternatus gets an amazing, amazing attack in Dynamax Cannon, right? And so, you think about a lot of the most common Dynamax options in the format at the moment, you've got things like Charizard, Venusaur, and Thunderous, for example. Eternatus has the ability to actually just get a one-hit knockout onto those Pokemon through Dynamax Cannon, and it is so, so powerful. There's also Helping Hand Blastoise on this team, so you can further increase that damage output and really just, you know, secure those big knockouts. And so, the TLDR on why you want to use Eternatus is, while well, it's fast, it's got an amazing signature attack, and it can get a one-hit knockout onto a lot of common Dynamax threats before they're able, even able to move, right? And this thing has really good type coverage as well between Dragon, Poison, and Fire. You're able to deal massive amounts of damage to all the, you know, top Pokemon and the, the most common options in the format. The last thing about Eternatus is that it can't max, but you can actually use that to your advantage, right? Sometimes it can be tricky when you have two Restricteds and you kind of want to max both of them in a given match, but with this team, you have Evil Tall, which is, you know, a Pokemon that really likes to max, as well as Gigantamax Blastoise. So as a result, you're going to hyper-focus on maxing those, uh, and that means that you don't have to worry about, you know, having too many Pokemon potentially to go for a, a max option. So, yeah. Uh, long story short, though, you want to use Eternatus because this thing's just really fast and has the ability to get one-hit knockouts onto a lot of popular max Pokemon, especially with helping hand support from Blastoise. All right, first game of the day, and we're up against Super Standard Zacian plus Kyogre here. Um, this is basically still just one of the strongest teams, you know, running around at the moment. A lot of different variations you can run in terms of like your Zacian and Cortana EV spread slash items, uh, and you'll often, you know, maybe see Incinera on the team instead of something. But yeah, generally this composition is just super powerful. So I actually lean towards maybe setting up Trick Room in this matchup. Like Rillaboom, Blastoise, Bronzong are all really interesting. The main problem is if I set up Trick Room, I really have to worry about the Amoongus, right? Uh, I guess like the other thing is, do I ever actually not bring Rillaboom and then bring both of my restricted Pokemon here? I I'm pretty intrigued by a Rillaboom plus Bronzong lead, I think. But I could also go Blastoise plus Bronzong. Rillaboom Bronzong. Okay, you know, Blastoise Bronzong is actually pretty interesting here, I think. I think I might actually drop a Restricted here. Like, I... E Evil Tolls? Uh, it's not bad here. Um, Eternatus is just so powerful. I mean, I could drop Rillaboom and just bring Evil Toll instead. I actually don't think that's a terrible decision here. So, yeah, we're gonna go with this. I think um, the thing about going up against Ashin Kyogre is that like Blastoise in itself has a decent time into it, but here I'm staring down like a Cartana and a Moongus. I have to worry about Play Rough or Behemoth Blade still from Zacian onto Blastoise, so it's not like Blastoise just cleanly sweeps both of them with absolute ease, right? Uh, and my opponent's team is generally on the fast end, so if they don't bring a Moongus, right, and it's going to be Tornado's Kyogre lead, if they don't bring a Moongus, it means that I can get a lot of value out of... Um, trick Room. Now, turn one of this battle is already also pretty interesting because if you're my opponent, do you just Dynamax the Kyogre and just, you know, Geyser into Bronze on turn one of the battle? That's what I would do if I were in their shoes. So I kind of want to protect turn one, Max Blastoise here, and then actually just Cannonade immediately into Tornadus. Uh, Hailstorm actually isn't a terrible idea either, right? Because then I get to conserve extra turns of Cannonade because Kyogre isn't affected by it. Protect, Max, okay. Yeah, I actually like the idea of Protect, Max, and then Hailstorm into Tornadus. Because that also changes the weather, so then depending on Kyogre's item, I'm not sure a Geyser will actually KO Bronzong next turn. So, they're gonna commit to Dynamax here. 
What we really didn't want to do is just fake out into Kyogre, try to trick room, and then have them just max Geyser the Bronze on to get a one-hit KO onto it. All right. So if I can knock out Tornadus here, not often Tornadus is going to be Focus Sash, but that's fine. Um, if I can KO it, then I'll change the weather as well, and then I can angle to set up Trick Room the next turn. Mainly curious what Tornadus goes for here, right? Like, a Tailwind still makes a lot of sense because you're covering for the Trick Room option from my end by just going for Geyser onto Bronzong. We'll have Evil Tall and Eternatus in the back. Maybe it is just bring Rillaboom over Evil Tall, honestly. Like, I brought Evil Tall because it's pretty good into, like, the Amoongus, for example, and I was worried about my opponent just having Amoongus, but they're likely just going to bring in Zashi in this next turn. Ooh, Tornadus goes for a Protect of its own. Okay. So a trade protects. I guess that's not terrible, but it's not amazing for me either. Yep, it's just gonna be Geyser in the rain. 174 down to 114. That's 60 damage. Life for Kyogre? No, not even. <laughs> oh, Kyogre is just so powerful. Uh, we'll change the weather, but I'm pretty sure another Geyser is just going to KO me right now. Uh, I could go for Cannonade here, you know, but... Hmm. Oh, it takes a little bit of hail damage. So they haven't Tailwinded. Now you expect Tailwind and then just Geyser into the Bronzong slot, right? I could switch Bronzong out into Eternatus. Bronzong out into Eternatus here. Eat up the Geyser. And go for a... I don't mind going for a Cannonade. Well, am I at the risk of getting KO'd with Blastoise by a Kyogre like Zacian double up? I just would rather ensure that I get three turns of Cannonade on whatever is coming in to replace Tornadus. So I'm, I'm down to go for it here. I guess the other interesting question is, is it ever worth actually just giving up Bronzong here, right, and getting a free switch in? The idea is if I switch in Eternatus, then I can protect Eternatus next turn, style out another turn of Dynamax, and that's my opponent's Dynamax just over with, right? Uh, and then physical AV Evil Tall is actually really solid into Kyogre, because I can just go for Dual Wing Beat into Sucker Punch. That's interesting, they actually Hurricane. Uh, they confuse me. Okay, uh, that's fine if I don't get hit by Confusion, because it means you didn't actually set up Tailwind. We do take Geyser there, okay. If Confusion comes out here, though, it'll definitely be a little bit frustrating. The thing is, I think Zacian is just going to come out to replace the Tornadus anyway, right? Okay, so no Confusion there, which is good. Hurricane was a pretty high-risk play there, but I guess it makes sense. They just didn't feel the need for Tailwind, especially knowing that like, I have potential Trick Room on Bronzong. Um, and, like, they're, they're probably thinking, well, I don't need Tailwind because Zacian just comes out, outspeeds Eternatus now anyway, right? Which would make a lot of sense. But now I'm just a little bit nervous about Confusion in the subsequent turns. So I think Zacian should come in here. You could also bring out the Kartana, but if you bring out Kart Kartana, I can actually just Life Orb Flamethrower the Kartana immediately and just guard the Blastoise. So it's interesting because I think like both Rillaboom and Incineroar could have value in this game as well. I don't know about my lead, but it would have covered for a lot of things. Like if the Kyogre didn't come out immediately, right? I think the Rillaboom, or sorry, the Bronzong would have been put on uh, on a lot of pressure with Trick Room immediately. Especially because a lot of the Tornadises on these teams nowadays don't carry Taunt. Zacian comes out. Uh, I am confused. Got Dynamax Cannon, Bronzong in the back. The thing is, Kyogre isn't going to KO Blastoise here. Like, I actually kind of expect Zacian to target it here. Maybe a double up even. I'm down a Dynamax Cannon here into Kyogre. And then just Cannonade into Zacian here. I guess what's scary is the end game against Zacian. But Bronzong can do fairly well into it. Especially with Trick Room Iron Defense Body Press. The downside is that Zacian's most often carry Sacred Sword. And so it ignores any defense boosts, right? But... I don't think a Sacred Sword should just KO us immediately. They Sacred Sword Eternatus? So I'm guessing they were reading into me switching into the um, Bronzong there, but now if uh, Blastoise does not get confused this turn, Cannonade plus the Residual should just KO Zacian. And that should be enough to just win the game. So we're really hoping to not get confused here. And they go for Geyser. Interesting. I feel like if you're going to Geyser and double up onto that slot, you might as well just Behemoth Blade, because Behemoth Blade plus Geyser should KO anything on my team. Whereas by going for Sacred Sword, they allowed for me to get a free attack off, right? 
Come on, boss toys, please don't hit yourself. Okay, nice. Oh, that was really stressful. I feel like getting uh, hit by a hurricane outside of rain into confusion is like one of the most stressful things you can deal with in this game. So we don't knock out the Zashin, but that's fine. Uh, Sucker Punch should now finish it off, I think. Uh, actually, I can just bring out Bronzong and Protect, no? Uh, this game actually isn't one yet. I was I was thinking we would one-shot the Zashin there, but they have enough bulk to survive. Oh, uh, but you know what I can do? I can just bring out Evil Tall now. And with Evil Tall, I have Sucker Punch here into either Pokemon. Zashin's always going to faint after another turn of Cannonade here. And Helping Hand Sucker Punch should KO Kyogre. The thing is that they could switch out Kyogre in this position, right? So I may just be better off going for Sucker Punch here onto Zacian. Because what's their final Pokemon be? Kartana, Amoongus, Landorus? Like, Bronzong's pretty good against all of those. So I'm actually down to just Hydro Cannon into Kyogre and Sucker Punch Zacian. Basically, like, you know, the Evil Toll's in a decent position against Kyogre right now. I'm not going to get one shot by it. Um, cool, we'll get Sucker Punch off. It also may have been more optimal to actually go for uh, Helping Hand there just to conserve my attack. Because Hydro Cannon shouldn't KO Kyogre here. They go for Origin Pulse, that's fine. Okay. Yep, we take that pretty well, especially with the Assault Vest. I'd be fine hitting myself with Confusion here. But we do connect on the third attack. I think it might be a Solves Kyogre. Oh, Hydro Cannon actually does get the KO there. That's pretty clutch. That was a crit. Okay, I, I think if it's AV without the crit, we don't get the knockout there. But uh, I figured it was AV, so then I could just Sucker Punch it the next turn. Then, you know, whatever comes in maybe gets one KO, but then Bronzong should win the end game. And I kind of expect a Moongus here in the back, but it's actually Landorus. Okay. So given that it was Landorus here, like, they didn't have too many options against Bronzong plus Blastoise, right? Okay. Uh, Swords Dance is the, you know, one thing to watch out for at this point. Um, I think here it's actually fine to just click Foul Play. Like, their play is to go for Rock Slide, right? But as long as they don't get a Swords Dance off in this game... Yep, exactly. So, like, Foul Play covers for the for the Swords Dance option, right? Because, yes, I should be worried about Rock Slide there, but Rock Slide just doesn't do enough damage to both of my Pokemon. And I've got Bronzong in the back, right? So Landers theoretically should never win there unless, like, I allow them to get a Swords Dance. Uh, and not just one Swords Dance, but multiple Swords Dances off, right? Because Bronzong was always going to be really solid in the endgame against Landorus. Because Landorus normally runs, you know, Rock Slide, Fly, Earthquake, Swords Dance, Protect... Uh, maybe U-turn, for example. So you shouldn't have actually have a way to hit the Bronzong here unless, like, you have some really big surprise attack. And even then, it's not enough to deal that much damage, right? So this game was interesting because we both played, like, a little bit passively in terms of trading attacks. But I think the pivotal turn was when they went for Sacred Sword onto Eternatus uh, rather than just a Behemoth Blade there. That allowed me to just get a free attack off with Eternatus that I probably shouldn't have gotten off. Uh, and it just kind of blew the game wide open. But Physical Evil Tall here, really nice to, you know, get the Sucker Punch to finish off the Zacian. Uh, and then have the foul play to just easily KO Landorus as well. So, yeah. Although, I guess even if you were just, like, special AV evil tall, you'd, you might not still be running Sucker Punch at foul play, and we still would have been able to pick up those KOs. Um, but, yeah, just having, you know, the dual wing beat pressure into things like Amoongus, Kyogre, and Cortana was also nice, even though Amoongus and Cortana didn't actually come out in this matchup. So, yeah, let's look for another. Next match here, and we are up against Reshram and Zacian with Thunderous, Incineroar, Grimmsnarl, and Rillaboom. So normally these teams have, you know, Assault Vest, Reshram, uh, Light Clay, Dual Screens, Grimmsnarl. Although you could run Fake Tears, would be pretty interesting. Eerie Impulse, Thunderous. Like, Reshram is almost always the Dynamax option on this team, but I don't want to discount the potential of Dynamax Thunderous. Uh, I think Rillaboom never comes out into this matchup. It just really provides such little value. Physical Evil Tall is interesting, especially because I can actually max Rockfall the, um, max Rockfall them, but I think Blastoise just getting Cannonade off in this game is solid. <sighs> Bronzong could Iron Defense up, but it's just so poor into Reshiram that I think I want to go Incineroar, Blastoise, Evil Tall, Eternatus. I mean, Eternatus theoretically is really strong here, right? So why not uh, Incineroar, Eternatus lead, Evil Tall, actually why Incineroar? Why not just Blastoise, right? Because this pressure is fake out. A faster fake out uh, at that as well. Yeah, so let's go with these. 
I mean, this isn't really any different from like the mode that I was using yesterday, but Rillaboom doesn't make that much sense here. Like, there is a very obscure world in which in a best of three you would bring Rillaboom because you find that the right like kind of line to take is maxing Rillaboom and max quaking Reshiram under Trick Room, or you find that the Reshiram is like slower than the Rillaboom here. But the Rillaboom is no speed investment, so that would be very surprising. Uh, it's gonna be Thunderous and Grim. Now the tricky thing about this in Best of One is I don't know the Thunderous set. I don't know if you're Defiant or you're uh, Prankster. I mean, that's really scary. Uh, if you're Eerie Impulse, you're really not that scary here. And if you're... You know what? I'm actually down to just Dynamax Cannon Thunderous and fake out Grimmsnarl on turn one. Because if you Eerie Impulse me, fine. That means you're not really dealing any significant damage across the next couple of turns. And if you Dynamax, well, hey, yesterday we had a Dynamax Cannon just go off into Thunderous. So, let's see. So this is the thing, right? I was like, well, most of the times the Rush Ram's on these Team Dynamax. But you do want to, like, you don't want to get baited into thinking that it's 100% going to be Dynamax Rush Ram. Because then if I ignore Dynamax Thunderous as a possibility here, I could be in a lot of trouble, right? Because if I knew it were Eerie Impulse Thunders, I'd probably just want to fake it out and then Sludge Bomb Grimmsnarl on turn one. But now we just get Dynamax Cannon off here. So then I'm curious, right? Like, are you not Assault Vested? Uh, if you are AV, then you should get the Knockout, I would assume. Or sorry, uh, you should survive and I would not get the Knockout. But yeah, <laughs> it is so satisfying to see Eternatus get these one-hit KOs. I think, like, that's the thing, right? Because I, I think in Team Preview, it's, uh, to me... A you know, they, they bluff, like, Eerie Impulse and uh, Bulky Thunderous, and it could have been really easy to just click Fake Out into that slot, right? And then, like, Grimmsnarl then maybe gets the screens up, so they were probably thinking, well, Blastoise isn't going to go for Fake Out here, I can just get Light Screen up, but now I actually think it is pretty much impossible for them to win the game. Yep, they bring Rush Ram out, because now I can actually just simply Dynamax the Blastoise, or I should say Gigantamax. Um... Gigantamax, Blastoise, switch out into uh, Evil Tall here, and then just Cannonade into Grimmsnarl. Actually, I'd rather just target Reshiram, right? No, I still want to uh, get rid of Grim. The reason for that is because Grim is kind of a nuisance for Eternatus here, um, where like with speed control, right? If you have Thunder Wave or Trick Iron Ball or whatever, uh, and Evil Tall here being Dark type is immune to both of those. I don't have to worry about, like, Trick Eject Button here from Grimmsnarl, so it's a very clear path for a Grimmsnarl Dynamax. Basically, the reality is, uh, given the turn 1 position, we were already in a pretty good spot. They could have gotten around it by actually just switching out into Zacian on turn 1, but then how I would respond to that uh, is switching my Eternatus out into Incineroar on turn 2 of the battle, maxing Blastoise, and then just going for a Cannonade from that angle, right? I think a lot about this game is finding the right position for Blastoise to get the Cannonade off. So, yep, they tried to trick there, but it is going to go into the Evoltal slot. And Dragon Post is going to come out as well. So, given the trick, I would think it's Iron Ball. That's a sick animation, by the way. I feel like, uh, despite Dragon Pulse obviously being one of the more reliable Dragon type attacks, we just see like Draco Meteor or Roar of Time, uh, you know, so much more frequently because you just do more damage with them uh, and they're powerful max moves as well uh, when you uh, Dynamax. So, okay, I think now that honestly should just win us the game from that angle. I do not see how my opponent can come back here, but uh, I still have to find, like, I, I have to not throw the game, right? So let's just make sure we don't give our opponent a chance to get back into this game. At this point, I'm pretty content going for 100% accurate attacks, I think. Yeah, like, I'll just foul play into the Reshiram here and Max Hillstorm into Reshiram. There's just so much residual damage uh, at this point in the game. And yeah, I think my opponent recognizes there's not really very much they can do from this angle. So that's the thing about Eternatus. This Pokemon can actually just win you the game on uh, turn one or in, in a single turn if it actually is able to get a one-hit knockout onto a Dynamax Pokemon, right? Um, and I was expecting Reshiram to be the max option here, but max Reshiram obviously is not super good into Eternatus. Now, if you're a Solvis and you have Light Scream from Grimmsnarl, maybe it's okay. But basically my plan was, let's say they let Grimmsnarl plus the Reshiram... Like, turn one, I can still just fake out plus Dynamax Cannon and maybe sacrifice the Eternatus, 
Um, you know, if you're Assault Vest and you max Quake Me, you'll survive. But then from that angle, I can just max the Blastoise Cannonade. Uh, and then, like, I think Blastoise, Evil Toll, and Sinnoh is in a pretty good position in that end game. But the reality is that, like, my opponent had one good answer into the Blastoise in that game. It was the Thunderous, and I was able to just eliminate Thunderous immediately. And I think one of the main things in that battle is also the advantage of having a Fake Out from Blastoise, right? Because it allows me to prevent Grimmsnarl from doing anything on turn one. And given how common Grimmsnarl is in this format, I think being able to just deny it and attack immediately is a really really big deal so yeah uh eternity just once again just comes up clutch for us so let's look for another Ooh, next game here and it's a zygarde zamazenta team we might be in for a long one here uh so oh i mean we have dynamax cannon here like i feel like eternity should be really good here we have Dynamax Cannon, we have Foul Play, we have in uh, Intimidate, Blastoise is good, Bronzong is okay with Iron Defense Body Press stuff. Like, I feel like we have a lot of resources and tools to deal with this, but I think if I were to lose, um, it would definitely, like, one contributing factor would probably be, like, lack of experience here, because, like, I haven't practiced against this very much or gone up against it very much in the ladder, so not seeing, like, clear win conditions could be a little bit tricky here. But, let's see, like, they have Tailwind Pressure with Suicune, Zapdos could be Dynamax, could be Eerie Impulse as well. I do think Dynamax Zapdos makes a lot of sense with this team, because they don't really have any other Pokemon that want to max other than Zygarde. So... I mean, Blastoise is still really solid, right? Like, I could just go Blastoise, Eternatus, Evoltal. I'm actually a little bit intrigued by Rillaboom in this battle. Uh, I, I feel like here you can't necessarily go wrong with your Pokemon choice, but like, I don't know what the best four are. Hmm. I don't want to play the slow pace game here, so I don't think I want to bring Bronzong, although I think admittedly it's actually quite solid. Um. Okay, I'm actually bringing Rillaboom here. That might be the weakest out of the three options, but basically my opponent's Suicune scares me a little bit, and Rillaboom gives me a very nice answer into it. But the thing is, if they don't bring Suicune, then I think Incineroar and Bronzer are just, like, a lot better. But in a best of one, I kind of want to cover for all of my opponent's Pokemon choices, rather than, like, hyper-focus on, you know, four or five out of the six, and then ignore one, and then have them bring out that one Pokemon. So, yeah, there's Suicune coming out. Okay. Uh, I guess the interesting thing here, though, is how turn one plays out. I want a Helping Hand Dynamax Cannon. Like, okay, so basically from this angle, if you're my opponent, you have a bunch of plays. One is to just Tailwind with Suicune and then Max Guard, or sorry, Protect with Zapdos if you have it. Um, Another is to Dynamax Zapdos and just attack immediately here. So one play I could make, I can't fake out here because um, they're going to be in her focus. One play I could make is Helping Hand plus Dynamax Cannon into Suicune. The problem is I don't know if that gets the knockout onto it. But uh, I think in this position, I'm willing to explore that as an option here. It would be satisfying to just KO Zapdos here, though, no? Um, but I'll, I'll target this Suicune here. I think even if Zapdos doesn't protect, like, if we, we have a chance of KOing Suicune, it's not bad. And they are actually going to just max here, okay? Uh, we could have claimed another victim here with Eternatus, but Talasa did not go for it this turn. That's okay, though, I think. The problem, though, is now it's like if I eliminate Suicune, it means that I brought this Rillaboom to try to deal with it, and now it won't provide any value. Because I was thinking Protect Zapdos and just Tailwind was a really safe play for them here. Uh, especially in front of an Eternatus, but they make the better play by just maxing Zapdos. So I'm, I'm a little bit sad because we could have just dunked on Zapdos, but they did max card. Okay, okay. So that makes me think that the Zapdos here... Um, doesn't actually have Protect, and it's using, like, Roost or Eerie Impulse to max card instead. So good. Uh, this was the prediction I was trying to make on turn one. And we one-shot the Suicune with the crit! <laughs> I think the crit may have mattered there. It comes down to, uh, I mean, how bulky Suicune is, but even if they don't have that much, like, special defense in investment, I feel like Suicune is so bulky that I would expect them to survive, but I don't know my Suicune into Eternatus, or Eternatus into Suicune damage calcs very well, but, uh... This just puts them in an absolutely terrible position. Uh, I actually think it might just be too difficult for them to come back from at this point. Because here, now I can just Helping Hand and Dynamax Cannon the Zapdos slot. We get a knockout onto that, and then I can just Max Blastoise next turn. And if you KO the Eternatus, I just switch into Incineroar. But 
I want to do the damage calc after this game because I want to see if that crit mattered. I'm pretty sure it did, meaning that then they would have probably set up Tailwind and then Zapdos can start maxing. I think I still would have been in a pretty decent position because then I could like protect the uh, Eternatus and then just like cannonade into Zapdos. Uh, and they're actually trying to, yeah, bait a dragon type attack here, but Zygarde is not that scary without any boosts, right? If you don't have weakness policy activated on it and it hasn't gotten like any coil boosts off, it's just not that much of a threat. So uh, this game really highlights this helping hand uh, duo, right? Because we're just getting so much damage off and uh, yeah, it's another Dynamax cannon getting coming off now. So I, I think like Eternatus is at its best when your opponents like don't have Pokemon that like, just naturally outspeed it. And yeah, it's another one hit knockout right there. So, the fact that Eternus just outspeeds, like, the base 100s to kind of base 110 range, right? Things like Zapdos, uh, Cortana, Lander's T. Uh, Lander's is a little bit slower. Charizard, Thunderous, right? Eternus has a really fantastic matchup against all of those here. So, now Zygarde comes out, but we haven't even Dynamaxed yet. Uh, Max Blastoise with Eternus here in itself is just super powerful. So, uh, I, I said switch in Incineroar earlier. Did not bring Incineroar into this one because I brought Rillaboom. Ooh. I think that was my neighbor's car going off. Um, I don't think Zamazenta even KOs us here, but I think it's fine to just max. I'm actually going to uh, cannonade into Zamazenta and just Dynamax Cannon here into Zygarde, I think. They're going to Behemoth Bash, but that shouldn't KO the Eternatus. And as soon as we get the Cannonade off, like the one thing I don't want to do in this game is give my opponent the chance to come back by activating a weakness policy on Zygarde, but yeah. I think both this game and the last game is highlighted, like, you can just really go off very, very quickly with um, Eternatus, right? So, yeah, I'm curious about the sets here. And let's do the damage calc, because uh, I don't know that off the top of my head. So, Behemoth Bash, Iron Head turns into that, Coaching, Wide Guard Protect, Max HP, Max Speed, Leftover, Zygarde, Thousand Arrows, Outrage is interesting, Coil and Protect. Uh, leftover, so didn't actually have that much healing. They did have Protect here, so I, I'm not sure they actually needed to go for Max Guard. I think the Protect makes sense if you're worried about Gigantamax Blastoise going for Cannonade, because I think the logic from my opponent's end is, hey, let me set up Tailwind with Suicune here, then the next turn I can Helping Hand Max Lightning to just KO Blastoise and you don't get Cannonade off. So I think that was probably what my opponent was trying to do here. But 207 HP and 154 Special Defense, so I want to pull up the Damage Calc and then do that Calc. White Herb. White Herb Rillaboom is pretty interesting. It makes sense given the amount of uh, Incineroars in the format. Life Orb Zapdos, Leftovers, as we saw in Zygarde. Max HP, Max Special Defense, right? This is just against all the special Ice-type damage uh, that you have to face in this format. Not just Ice-type, obviously, but uh, Ice is obviously one of the types that Zygarde doesn't really like going up against. And then, yeah, there was Snarl on the Suicune as well. So, yeah, uh, let's do the Eternity's Damage Cut because I'm really curious. Yeah, so pulling up the damage calc here, as you can see, um, even with modest max life orb helping hand Dynamax Cannon, given that the Suicune did have a good amount of special defense bulk and HP, um, at maximum we do 88%. So the critical hit was game defining there, and honestly it turned it from putting my opponent potentially in a decent position to the game just being over immediately, right? Uh, because like they kind of went all in with that turn one play, uh, and it should work out for them the majority of the time. So that's just a situation where we got really lucky in. I think we still would have been in okay shape going into turn two from there, but then I would have had to worry about the uh, you know combination of Suicune plus Life Orb Zapdos, and that could have been really scary. Um, but yeah, Fortune was definitely on our side in that one. And I think that if they get the Tailwind off, presumably that's what they were going for. Uh, maybe they, if they were going for Snarl there, like, I think then we're still in okay shape. Tailwind, I mean, we're still okay, but then the game gets a lot tougher, right? Basically, I have Rillaboom in the back to glide to knock out the um, Suicune, but then dealing with uh, the Zapdos is a lot scarier. Like, I think what I would do the next turn is probably then Max Blastoise, Cannonade into Zapdos, Protect Eternatus, and I would expect them to, like, try to KO Eternatus there. Uh, and then the subsequent turn, like, maybe even switch out the Eternatus um, into the, uh, bring in the Evil Tall, for example, right? Um, and then go from there. So, I think it would have been okay if Tailwind went up, but basically the game would have obviously been so much harder if the crit didn't happen. So, yeah, you know. Sometimes, uh, it, like, that is just such a game-defining uh, me mechanic that it can just win you the game, like, immediately, right? And we were able to just run away with the game, but uh, would have been a lot more interesting, I think, if the crit didn't happen. So, yeah. Uh, you know, I always, like, do these reflections and, like, learn these calcs because it's really important to know, like, when it matters, right? Because if the critical hit doesn't matter, then it's like, okay, objectively, I feel like that play on turn one, then, like, 
is just so strong whereas because here seeing this calc like i think i'd still make the same play even knowing that the suicune would survive uh but then it makes me wonder okay like you know if we're not even getting the knockout on turn one then does that mean i made the best lead right like could i have anticipated uh suicune plus zapdos and how would i lead against it i don't know if we have that many solid answers into it because i think zapdos is a really strong option into my uh, entire team here um but yeah i think my opponent made the absolute right lead decision here and i think their turn one turn one play like going for that protect is really safe as well the only thing you get punished for unfortunately is a critical hit so yeah uh, sometimes that's just gonna kind of how the uh coin flips go but uh yeah i think my opponent you know to their credit definitely had a really good lead and it was really smart of them to try to play towards dynamax aptos as well rather than the uh zygarde and zamazenta duo because uh, zamazenta definitely uh, is uh, has a tougher time in this matchup i think but yeah it's been a fast couple of games so we'll look for another one Final game here, and it is Groudon, Zacian, Charizard, and Sin Grim, but instead of something like a, a Venusaur, for example, you have Porygon 2 on that team. Or Gastrolon. Gastrolon's the common member on, you know, the classic Rhenia Sun. Uh, so Evil Tall's really interesting here. I think, like, Evil Tall Instant Eternatus is a cool core. Uh, I worry a little bit about porygon 2 here so as weird as it seems i might actually want to bring bronzong here because otherwise my porygon matchup is really subpar and i know i think like uh, in the team creators team report for this team you know they mentioned that like you know evil tall was kind of here for some of the sun oriented matchups because blastoise can struggle a little bit in, in them so um okay i'm down for an incinor evil tall lead eternatus and bronzong in the back we also have a uh, physical evil tall here with max rockfall, right? So I could theoretically really catch my opponent's Charizard off guard and just KO it with max rockfall. So yeah, let's see. Anyway, I, I'm, I'm just really disappointed in that last game that we didn't get to see it shake out because I think my opponent had a really cool team and I think they made the best possible play on turn one as well. Like I said, maybe you could go for protect instead of max guard and Zapdos, but I could see what they were going for and going for max guard to make sure that the um, Blastoise doesn't get cannonade off against it. Zacian plus Porygon 2. Okay. Uh, that's not a bad lead for us. What do I expect in the back? Groudon is one, obviously. I think back Charizard for them here is really powerful. If they if they actually did that. I think, like, not a lot of players do that when playing... Um, yeah, when playing around with Charizard, you normally just lead it. But a Charizard in the back here, I think, could be really deadly. It would make a lot of sense here, too, honestly. Um, I mean, I don't think I really want to max Evil Tall here. Like, it's not really that strong. I'm actually down to just Flare Blitz into Zacian and then switch out into Bronzong here. Because I could see the uh, Zacian switching out. It, I think Protect is, like, the kind of obvious play for them to go for. Maybe they just Sacred Sword. I'd be okay with that. Uh, but Bronzong's actually in a really nice position against both of these two Pokemon currently. And they just Blade. Okay, cool. Works for me. We get a big Flare Blitz off here. So Ding Dong, Bronzong is out. Leftovers will allow it to heal up a little bit. Big damage from Flare Blitz here. I don't... If they're, uh, you know, defensively invested here, they should survive. Yeah. But that's obviously an amazing amount of damage to start on Zacian. I guess I don't love seeing foul play into the Bronzong slot there. Um, them having foul play isn't really... You know what? <laughs> they traced the Dark Aura. I just realized that. Um, still not a terrible trade on turn one, right? But puts us in a slightly weirder spot. Man, Eoltel's probably the right max option here. Them having Dark Aura foul play is actually super bad for my Bronzong. Uh, yeah, it's not good. This turn, it's like you could protect Zacian and just foul play into Bronzong. I'm still intrigued in just Flare Blitzing into Zacian and protecting. We'll see where they go from there. Okay, Zacian's not protecting. Maybe they Sacred Sword into Incinera, but at neutral, I think we should survive. Let's see. Good, okay. So I trade Incinera for Zacian effectively in this game, and I don't think that's a terrible trade for me, but... My Bronzong is looking a lot weaker than I intended it for 
And foul play is not that rare on Porygon. Gun. In fact, it's, I would say, you know, the attack you should be expecting normally. And they actually very nicely double up into the Incineroar slot there. I think that was... It feels bad, because it was like a missed opportunity for me to just get a free Iron Defense up with Bronzong. And if I actually Iron Defense there, foul play suddenly becomes not as scary, right? But that's okay. Let's go out into Evil Toll now. I would love to see a Charizard here. I'd love to just max Evil Toll and dunk on it with the Rockfall. That's Charizard coming out. Ah. <sighs> Now what? The thing is, even if I Iron Defense last turn, because they did bring back Charizard, I'd still be in a pretty weird spot. Some Dynamax. I'm going to try to just Rockfall the Charizard here, I think. And switch out into Eternatus here. The thing is, what like my opponent could win this even without any max turns, because even, like, what you could do here is just G-Max Wildfire Bronzong, Trick Room with Porygon 2, and then play a Porygon Groudon-centric endgame. So, if I didn't bring Bronzong, what would have been better in this position? The answer is Rillaboom, right? Because Rillaboom would at least give me late game value against Groudon. What would make me very happy is if they switched the Porygon out this turn into Groudon. It could be Charty Berry Charizard as well, though, right? So. Okay, they're going for it, though. If you're not Charty Berry here and Rockfall just gets the one hit knockout, we're in very good shape. I'd say very good shape, but with them having. Foul play on Porygon, still scary. But basically, imagine if, like, we get the one-hit KO here and I had Rillaboom rather than Bronze on the endgame. Like, Rillaboom then would just be able to Grassy Glide, Groudon, or Porygon, fake out into either, right? So, I don't know. I don't regret bringing Bronze on here, but it took so much damage. Like, my opponent just outplayed me uh, in the opening turns, I'd say, right? Um, I didn't mind the Incinera trade-off, though. I think, actually, like, getting the Flare Blitz into Zacian was really nice, but... What else could I have done there? Fake out. I just, I just never want to stay in with Evil Toll in turn one. I wonder if I ever consider Dynamaxing Incineroar. That's also a possibility. Just the Max Flare and one shot the Zacian. But I don't like that because then I'm so weak to a late game Charizard. I mean, Charizard is just such an insanely strong Pokemon in this format, right? Like, this Pokemon's comeback potential is just off the charts. So I'm mainly curious if it's Charty Berry here. Okay, there's Wildfire. Yep, into the Bronzong slot. Oh my gosh. <laughs> ah. They're life orbs, so I will get the one-hit knockout onto them. Okay, okay, okay. Oh, we are in such an interesting endgame. The thing is, I was better off just sacrificing Bronzong there. Because Eternatus plus Evil Toll then would maybe be able to just pick up a one-hit knockout on a Porygon too. But now, I'm stuck with Bronzong, so that switch was pretty questionable on my end. Why did I make that switch? Well, because I was like, well, I'll resist the wildfire. And I think the other reason was because I was expecting Porygon to potentially stay in there. <clears throat> I think it's still maybe okay, though. The problem is I'm taking wildfire damage every turn. I can airstream, though. I, I think, like... See, the, the other thing is, I don't know if two max darknesses KOs Porygon with sand damage. Trace Levitate. Okay, it's pretty insignificant. Um, yeah, basically what I want to do is Airstream Porygon here, protect, and then Airstream Body Press to KO it next turn. I don't know if Porygon's even... It might still just be faster even after two airstreams if it's not min speed, right? Uh, with two darknesses there may have actually gotten the knockout with Dark Aura. Mm, they have Heat Crash as well. That's really bad. But they did double up into that slot. Uh, now your play is Heat Crash, Bronzong, and Trick Room with Porygon. Darkness plus Sand might actually KO the uh, Porygon slot, though. Because I have Dark, uh, Dark Aura this time around. Yeah, uh, Physical Evil Tall is just doing a lot more damage than I expected it to. Okay, go for the higher base power max Darkness here. 
I'm actually fine going for a double protect in this position because I think my opponent's always just going to heat crash anyway. Uh, like, heat crash trick room is their potential win condition from this angle. Yeah, so I'm down to go for a double here because I. Unless heat crash doesn't KO me, in which it might not. Okay, we failed the double here. Max Darkness. Porygon does survive, but it should faint from sand here. So unless they click recover, it'll be Evil 12 versus Grodd on 1v1. Yeah, there's Heat Crash. Okay. Yeah, that was enough for KO. So I think the double uh, protect play there was correct. Yeah, and they trick room. So you can see, right, if I actually get the double off there, then I just have a Bronzong out against the Groudon, and I can actually just, like, iron defense and then protect up against it. But I, like, my plan, uh, part of the problem for me here is that they had Heat Crash on Groudon, right? So that implies the Assault Vest set, which then I think they also probably have, you know, one Rock, surely you have one Rock type attack. The question is, is it um, Stone Edge, Rock Slide? I think basically if they miss here, I could win the game, but otherwise this should be game over. And actually, I think a Heat Crash here might just be enough to win anyway. Yeah. That was super close, though. Really fun game. I should have played around Heat Crash a little bit better. Yeah, okay, they just Heat Crash us here. I assume that plus the Residual is enough to KO. Oh, it's not. Uh, Foul Play into Sucker Punch might be enough here. Nah, it's not going to be. It's close. But suck it, it will survive just with the Sliver with Sucker Punch. So basically, we had like a one-third chance to win the game there with the double protect there. Because we get it, I should just win the match given that they did indeed set up Trick Room. And it was basically covering for, okay, if you don't Trick Room here, then Evil Tall will outspeed you under Trick Room, right? Or outside of Trick Room. Um, they're just always going to Heat Crash again here, so my only hope is to critical hit Sucker Punch here. But I think they'll hang on with about 20%-ish or so. Groudon's just too bulky here. Did a little bit more than that, but yeah, not enough. Uh, so it was probably AV Groudon in this endgame, meaning what I could have actually done was, like, doubled up onto the Groudon twice. Like, I could have just protected Bronzong, Max Darkness Groudon, and then Max Darkness Groudon again, and then Iron Defense up with Bronzong. I think that was the correct way to win this game. But I, I didn't know the Groudon set. Like, Asolvus is the more common set these days, but you also see Swords Dance or Bulk Up with, you know, either Leftovers or Citrus Berry or White Herb. And so in my eyes, I was like, well, okay, if we KO the Porygon, we should always just win the game, right? Um, although Airstream into Darkness wasn't even enough. Double Darkness into the Porygon then would have been the correct play there. So, yeah, even even if they were, like, the, the you know, Swords Dance for Bulk Up God on sets, I think maybe just Darknessing into Porygon was better there. The logic on my head was Airstream, Airstream, and then Body Press, but I actually now want to check Porygon's speed, because I don't even know if at plus two we outspeed it with Bronzong. Uh, yeah, actually, at plus two, we would have outsped it if they were min speed, but there was no guarantee Porygon was min speed there, right? So without knowing, then, um, yeah, it's, it, that, that play isn't really worth it, I think. So, two directions we could have taken in that endgame. Max Darkness, the Groudon twice, or Max Darkness, the Porygon twice, but the Airstream is always uh, the worst option out of all of those, and unfortunately, that is what I ended up choosing. So, yeah. Uh, of course, like, if we get the double protector, I think we're in a pretty good uh, position to win the game, because it means Bronzong sticks around, and I get a body press, or I can just iron defense under Trick Room. At that point, I'd probably actually just click body press, uh, and then foul play, and then sucker punch. That line of uh, attack should be able to win the game, but yeah. I guess, though, if they were indeed, like... <sighs> Yeah, I mean, Heat Crash is just pretty common on, like, Groudon. I, sh I, I need a cover for that option, right? So, yeah. Anyway, though, that was a really fun set of games. I hope it's opened to your eyes to how good um, Eternatus and Evil Toe can be. Uh, one other thing I could have done in that game, by the way, like, I, I think I played the end game uh, pretty subpar because I could have sacrificed Bronzong, right? Rockfall would have just KO'd Charizard, and I have an end game with Eternatus plus Evil Toll, and then I can just Dynamax Cannon, Airstream, into or Darkness into the Groudon. I guess the only thing there is I, I wouldn't know if it was Assault Vest Groudon or not, so then I'd be worried about them just protecting Groudon and setting up Trick Room with um, Porygon too. so not knowing the item there uh, makes things a little bit trickier, right? Uh, because if you do have Protect there, then Groudon uh, plus Porygon under Trick Room most likely wins, so yeah. Anyway though, yeah, that's going to be it for this one, so thanks so much as always for watching. Leave a like if you enjoy, don't forget to answer the question of the day, and I'll see you all soon. Alright, peace.